Hey there, my name is Lexi and thank you so much for joining me for another read along for the book, Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy by Omarion. Today we are diving into the last chapter of the book. This is chapter 11, Happiness and Wholeness. I have a unique perspective when it comes to accepting that we are all different and will embark on pathways that will sometimes not align with others. I was woken up to that early in my career. I've been working since I was 14. As a young entertainer in the group, we were expected to put everyone's expectations and bottom line first. We were kids working nonstop with a demanding schedule that often didn't afford us time to play, rest, or eat properly. Through it all, even when life was tough as a B2K member, I never let anything negative that I was going through steal my joy. We were together nonstop as a unit, so it was my job to move and live accordingly. So when it was time to part ways and embark on journeys that left some folks behind, I found an even deeper connection to my happiness. Moving on and writing down my thoughts and feelings in my journals was an opportunity for growth and rediscovery. Those lessons soon overflowed into my personal life. Coming to grips with the reality of letting go as a growth patience has allowed me to understand myself deeper and become aligned with acceptance. It taught me that no matter what, happiness is a choice. We can part ways with people and still wish them the best. We can take a different path, not knowing where to turn and still choose to press forward. There is so much beauty in that. When I think back on my relationship with the other members of B2K and when I reflect on my relationship with the mother of my children, even the painful memories, I send grace and well wishes to them. I'm a big believer in people being happy, even if that means I am no longer a part of their stories and they are no longer a part of mine. I am a believer in my power to choose and my commitment to joy. Outgrowing is necessary for us to expand into what truly is meant for us and our lives, both physically and emotionally. So often we are taught to think that just because we part ways or our relationship with a person ends, that it automatically means there is beef. While that is the case in some instances, it doesn't have to be longstanding. Parting ways does not have to define us, and we can wish people well when we disconnect from them. Putting pride and ego aside showed me that our life experiences don't always have to be deep and complicated. Sometimes shit just is what it is, and moving on can be the biggest blessing in disguise. Don't get me wrong, I went through real betrayal and hurtful shit with the mother of my children and my former bandmate. But I also deeply understand and realize that my emotional well-being required that I let them and all ill feelings associated with them go. I choose peace of mind, which in turn gave me happiness and a feeling of completion. Allowing people to leech off my high vibrational energy is never an option, nor was it conducive to my growth as a man. I've committed myself to be a man of forgiveness, and it's important to me that I not only lead by example, but that I live by example too. I release all grudges to gain emotional freedom. While there have been quite a few people over the years that have done me wrong, I sincerely wish them nothing but happiness. I hope they sleep well and feel nourished by life. I hope they feel fulfilled and satisfied on their path. And if they don't, I hope they get there. We all deserve that. I know people look at me like I'm either crazy, faking it, or the most zen dude of all time. I am none of the above. I am, however, open to the teachings of life. If I wasn't open to this, I would be stuck in a cycle of hurt and unhappiness, and that is never the goal. I am choosing not to be or stay stuck. That serves no one. Our personal happiness and wholeness is up to us and us alone. No one can make us happy on a holistic level. No one makes us whole either. We are the gurus of our own lives and existence. Trusting in this allowed a new type of growth to happen in my life. The blessings in moving on are liberating. Affirmations for peace. Read these out loud in a seated position. I am worthy of a clear and peaceful mind. I am open to healing. I am trusting the timing of my life. I am committed to handling my business and staying on track. What it means to me. I believe that peace is an energetic currency. We have to be mindful of how we spend our time and how we invest it. Our peace can either be drained or be replenished. It's important that we make time and space for things that fuel us and bring ease to our life. Even in moments of adversity, 
I believe that we can find and secure our peace. We are in charge of where our energy goes and flows. Stay open to the possibilities and the timing of life. Our peace will flow freely if we allow it. Reader Reflection What brings you peace of mind? Create a list that reminds you of the things that bring you calming energy. Commit to practicing them daily and keeping your vibration elevated in a peaceful state. Everyone doesn't have the capacity to think differently. We cannot force anyone to see things how we see them. We can only lead by example so that people can bear witness to us and in turn learn something. Responding to adversity with attunement versus aggression, that takeaway has taught me so much about individuality and the power of choice that I so deeply believe in. My happiness and wholeness don't depend on how others treat me. I feel that not holding grudges and instead focusing on my happiness and wholeness has allowed me to keep my focus sharp. In my development as a man, I've cherished and held fast to my joy because if I didn't, someone or something will try to take it from me and I've worked too hard to allow that to happen. Releasing grudges is imperative because if not, it becomes a part of our life force, like an extra piece of invisible luggage that we carry around. There are levels to it all this life. Over time, the universe has shown me the importance of continuing on the path of liberating myself, even when that includes leaving people and their mess behind. Letting go of the projected pain of others has given me the opportunity to imprint, impress, and affect those watching and observing. That's why I carry myself the way I do. It's not a temporary act, it's a lifestyle. I feel that's why so many people were so enamored by how I interacted with the unnecessary drama on the Millennium Tour. A lot of folks said, nah, fuck them. But for me and my energy, that wasn't going to enrich or raise my vibration. Our energy and message is transformed into gifts and insight when we commit to healthy happiness versus toxic happiness. Toxic happiness would be saying, yeah, you're right, fuck them, and enjoying watching the fall and demise of those who hurt us. That is not aligned with who I am or how I operate. I do not find joy in other people's pain and suffering. Although the occasional I told you so pops into my mind, I find joy in witnessing their healing and emotional growth. What I don't think a lot of people quite get is the liberation that comes with being genuinely happy for people. I am emotionally free, peaceful, and happy. And I want people, even those who are no longer walking through life with me, to be the same. This is an obstacle of life, and it doesn't have to be a negative one. For me, these obstacles mean that we must evolve into a higher way of being and living. Facing adversity and hurdles and moving through them to move on is powerful. On a spiritual level, it is a sacred thing. As I continue to evolve, my path to happiness is the way to wholeness. As I become more dedicated to being a man of peace, wisdom, and emotional freedom, liberation finds me. Happiness is a choice. I will continue to connect with my power, honesty, and responsibility by walking through life courageously. Being honorable and honest in the work I do as a performer and black man in the world is something worth nurturing and protecting fiercely. This life is short and is worth living to the fullest. I don't take one single day that I am gifted for granted. And because of that, I can exist as my fullest and true self, even when I face challenges, hurt, or hatred. It's not my job to get people to understand why I am the way I am, or why I choose happiness and wholeness over drama and brokenness. There is enough of that in the world. Something to remember, everyone isn't going to understand their role in your life. Everyone isn't going to part ways with grace and love. There will be people you encounter who will not rest until they see you broken down. My advice now and always is to stay whole and connected. Stay true to yourself and your choices. Don't give anyone the power to break you down, ever. Realize who you are as an individual. Stay close to your truth and character. Doing so paves the way for others. When we think about it, living this way is greater than you and me combined. It is a collective and universal act We are all integral parts of each other's stories. Our relationships with others are essential in life, even if they don't grow as planned. That's cool to me. It can show us something greater than ourselves, and that builds authenticity and character for the long haul. Creating your happiness and wholeness is not temporary. 
It's a forever work in progress. You must stay on your path. We all return to the source. In the end, I will come home to myself. Looking back must also be an option. That's how we learn. This is how we become better in this life. The learning from our lessons, past relationships, mistakes, and more make room for deeper clarity. They say don't look back. I say don't overlook it. I've grown so much as a man over the years. Getting curious about what happiness means to me, about what I want and need in my relationships, meant looking back at the shortcomings, the low points, and the relationships that didn't last. I've found balance and harmony in reflection. Throughout all my transitions, I've heard from people that they'll never look back and I shouldn't either. I get it. It can be uncomfortable to look at our pasts and reflect on how unhappy we have been or how broken we may have felt, but we must. If we are called to look behind us, we should, because that is the universe, God, or whichever higher power you believe in, tapping you on the shoulder for a reminder. Paying attention to those signs is necessary to become the people we want to be. There's always another aspect of doing that. There's always another way to look at what's in front of us or behind us. Our pasts are filled with gems that we haven't yet unearthed. Ignoring them doesn't mean they vanish. What I've realized is that choosing not to look back is a passive way of saying, I am okay with the past, even when we may not be. As I mature, I feel so much resilience in saying to myself that if I need to go back and dig up or address something, I am more than okay with it. I would rather that than to stay unsettled, unhappy, and unclear. Wholeness requires looking at the pieces in front of us. There is a power in and acceptance of it all. Energy check. Happiness and wholeness. How can forgiveness allow you to wish someone well who has once caused you pain genuinely? Are happy people more successful? What is the importance of being stress-free? Are happy people healthier in life? Do you have the courage to kill negativity with happiness? Many times when I was walking through a very public situation with the mother of my children, people tried to dictate how I should be because they didn't understand that I was choosing to take the higher road. I get that not everyone is me, but learn from that fact. Not everyone is you. Take the higher roads of your life. Accept the changing of paths. Be open to the reroutes ahead because there will be plenty. Don't be swayed by your struggles. You will have intense moments of fear, failure, and uncertainty along your journey. Instead of turning away from those things, turn toward them. Let the hard moments in your life guide you to your highest self. Happiness is waiting for you, but you have to choose it. You have to want it badly enough to chase it when you feel like you can't. Be the person who you wished you had been growing up. Be the change and live in alignment with your highest good. You get to decide how you want to live. There is power in realizing the importance of moving through the world in this way. It's easier said than done. People will try us, push our buttons, hurt us intentionally, and try to steal the very joy we worked so hard for. Trying to prove them wrong or investing your energy in trying to get them to stop is not the best use of your sacred time. You are whole, even when folks would rather see you in pieces. Everything you walk through is preparing you for abundance. I can see that more clearly now. There were moments when I was touring with B2K, thinking, what am I still doing here? But I knew that there was something greater in store for me and for them. I knew that going backward was my way of moving forward. There are a lot of things that outsiders will never understand about your life or choices, especially as it pertains to your true self and happiness. Try not to get blinded or bogged down by being misunderstood. That's part of life. It's a test to show the universe and yourself that you are who you say you are. When shit gets hard or feels heavy, commit to trusting that you are right where you need to be, and so are the other people who are a part of your story. Sometimes we have to be down and out to figure out where exactly it is we need to be. This teaches us how to stand up for ourselves and protect what is divinely ours. Recognize who you are, no matter what. 
Growing up in the entertainment industry, I was taught by watching early on that if you don't know who you are, no one else will know who you are. And folks will try to mold you into the version of you they think you should be. That's no way to live. So as you embark on this journey of happiness, remember the beauty in knowing your damn self, owning your truth and never allowing anyone to steal your happiness. You are a work in progress and a work of art, even with your flaws. Being whole is not about anyone else but you. We have to remember that we are the common denominator in our lives. It's easy to lose sight of that when things feel heavy, but it's important to remember that weight builds strength, and it's a reminder that we can and will persevere. Invest time in loving yourself and being your own inspiration. The hardships we face are setting us up for beautiful lessons. There may be moments when it's challenging to see it that way. No one said this journey would be easy. Keep going, keep growing, and keep connecting to the inner source that is you. Just because I got my heart broken doesn't mean I don't deserve a new experience. Stepping back to look at our full experience allows us a choice to change and move forward. Affirmations for love. Read these out loud in a seated position. I am worthy of love. I can create the love I want for myself in my life. My heartbreak has taught me the importance of self-love. I will devote my time and energy to loving spaces. What it means to me. The hurt of past relationships doesn't get to speak for the love we deserve. I believe that we all deserve full, loving energy that is healthy, supportive, and warm. Other people not knowing how to love us is not permission to give up on love altogether. It's easy to let the defeat of pain, heartache, and disappointment speak louder than self-love. This affirmation of love reminds me to love myself and learn how to love others better. I will not let any pain from my past hold me back. Reader Reflection Think of a hurtful time in your life, and instead of harboring ill feelings about it, think of a way to greet with love. What has hurt, pain, or heartbreak taught you? How can you take those lessons and turn them into self-love? Take notes on this reflection in your journal. Affirmations for self-trust. Read these out loud in a seated position. I can trust myself. At my core, I know what I want in life. Trusting my gut is in my favor. I will learn how to be more trusting of myself over time. What it means to me. Self-trust is the gateway to inner knowing. I believe that we all know and have our answers. The world teaches us that everyone else knows what's best for us. I do not agree. My intuition guides and leads me. Every day is a practice of learning how to better myself and trust my higher knowledge. This is something that takes time, practice, and dedication. Get to know yourself. Reader Reflection. Who taught you what you know? What is true for you and your life? In your journal, write a letter to yourself about trusting your highest self, even when it feels scary. Give yourself permission to unwind on the pages, to be honest with yourself about who you are and what you want. No one has your answers but you. Remember that. Affirmations for becoming your best. Read these out loud in a seated position. I am growing into my best self. I am healing into my best self. I am working on being my best self. I show love to myself as I become my best. What it means to me. I believe that working to become our best self will be an ever evolving process. It will not happen overnight. These words remind me that I am all that I am, that each step in my life is me marching toward my best self. I am a student of becoming my best. I am committed, so whenever I forget, I can look at these affirmations and remind myself that I am on the right path and headed in the right direction. 
No matter what, I will stay dedicated and determined to be the best version of myself and the best man I can be. As time goes on, life shows us where we need to improve. Becoming is an opportunity to evolve and expand spiritually and emotionally. Staying on this journey has kept me emotionally sound and connected to my truth. Reader Reflection In your journals, think about who you want to become in this life and write it all down. Don't worry about it sounding too big or too small, just reflect. What is bringing you closer to becoming your best and highest self? Think about what's holding you back. Your life is yours to adjust. Stand in your power and don't hold back. Five acts of peace, self-expression. Below are some practices that I use to stay grounded in peace. A peaceful mindset allows me to be productive and in tune with what matters. I'm sharing a few acts of peace with you below. These methods support me in being fully present in my life. They remind me to pay attention and be open to the life and experiences around me. The little things and shifts in life can really make a difference in how we see the world and how the world sees us. I'd like you to think about your five acts of peace. What brings you calm, joy, and recentering energy? When we stop and think about these things, we start to shift and change our behavior and find our flow in life. Grab your journal and jot down the things that offer you peace, community, and self-expression. Take a look at the little things and work your way out. We are all worthy of peace and inner clarity. I hope this exercise brings you closer to a daily practice of ease. Saying thank you with a smile. While this may seem like a small thing, it's actually a major key to living a peaceful life and spreading peace to others. You never know what people may be going through. Sharing a smile can change someone's entire day and mood. Peace isn't just about the self. It's also about pouring into our community too. We have the power to lift people's spirits with our joy, body language, and kindness. Helping someone less fortunate. This has helped create a clearer perspective for me in my life. A lot of things are happening that we have no control over or have any idea about. Being able to show up and help someone with no strings attached creates room for community care and brotherhood. The special thing about helping others is that our actions act as a mirror and so does the ability to receive. It's a two-way street. I believe that whatever we may have in abundance, it is our duty to share, not just monetarily, but energetically as well. Encouraging people we love. Encouragement is sacred and special. It's tied to the ability to realize and recognize those around us. Sharing words of encouragement and affirmation offers inner peace and external peace. It also builds bonds with those we love and serves as a reminder to be there for one another. Doing so offers a sense of ease and peace of mind. Doing an unpleasant chore without complaining. We all know that no one wants to do what they don't want to do. However, putting off things doesn't make our responsibilities vanish. Procrastination robs us from our peace. Doing the thing we don't want to do not only teaches us lessons of responsibility, but also restores peace in our lives. To be whole and present, we have to learn to move with the punches of life and handle our business. Moving your body. Surrendering to the movement and rhythm this serves as a recalibration of peace. When I'm dancing, I create motion that energizes me and brings me into a state of deep peace. Moving our bodies, be it dancing, walking, or stretching, helps us open up our minds to ease and calm. Don't second guess yourself. Reflection. Being able to be decisive allows you to stand steadfast in your choices and allows you to take a step back and really be sure about what it is that you want to do. And being decisive puts you in that alignment with whatever decisions you make and not second guessing yourself. You're in a better position because you've thought out your plan. Being decisive and not second guessing yourself really helps you build self-trust and self-confidence. Second guessing yourself makes more room for doubt, worry, 
and a lot of things that can take you away from the focus of trusting yourself and ease. Being decisive is important to me because when I have to make important decisions, I can do so with confidence in my choices. I was able to take my time and really pay attention to the choices I was making. This helped me see a clear path and aligned outcome. Most of the time I've had positive experiences with the practice of being sure of myself and not doubting my mind, heart, and gut. Being self-assured is valuable and important to me so that I can explore the positive outcomes with clarity. In a way, this goes hand in hand with manifestation. We cannot doubt our power and still expect the things in life that we want to come to fruition. We had to stand tall and secure. As I've matured, I've gotten better at using my self-confidence in every choice that I make. I always ask myself the hard questions before pressing forward. I always weigh my options, and as a man, I think this is essential to being a true leader. I often ask myself, if you choose this, will it affect something else in your life? everything comes full circle. So practicing mindfulness is essential to how we move and show up in the world. If I decide that I want to do something, weighing all my options helps me recognize and get in contact with the part of myself that is most attuned and aligned. I'm constantly reflecting on the needs of my heart and mind. I use being decisive and not second guessing myself as a marker and a moment of clarity and surety because every ounce of me needs to be present when making a choice. Getting out of pocket is not an option. Moving through the world in this way helps me accomplish a more present reality. It allows me to not allow negative thoughts or doubt to pierce my aura and throw me off track. Not allowing myself to be sucked in by fear or negativity protects my energy and keeps my mind sharp. When thinking about how valuable it is to not be swayed by indecisiveness, I've also started to think more about the power and resilience it takes to stand confidently behind the choices we make. Building on that strength is so important because we have to realize how we are showing up and what we are bringing to the table. Being able to understand what you bring to the table, no matter the setting, creates a sense of value for yourself. Some people have a delusion of what they bring to the table, and that's why it's so essential to build on your strengths and know who you are. You can have talents and abilities, but you've got to be able to take it further. Action has to match your words. Sometimes our strengths aren't even, and they won't always work out as we envision. There is a major key and lesson to take away from that. Being sure of ourselves and standing tall in our resilience makes room for self-trust in our lives. It's an invitation to grow in new and profound ways. When we pay attention to our power, to our flaws and to our strengths, we are able to be more clear about who we are in the world in the face of adversity or self-doubt. We can become a master of ourselves in this practice. Building on my strengths is important to me because it is tangible. It's something that I'm confident about and building on it will allow me to use my gifts and in better ways, in different ways. It gives me a sense of value especially when I think back to all the work I've put in. No one can ever take that away from me and deciding to listen and trust my intuition life gave me a gift of openness, even through adversity. One of my strengths is my ability to remain positive through negative and harsh terrain and realities. That's allowed me to choose who I want to be. It's also helped me see new perspectives and put me in a position to accept certain things as they are. Acceptance is a choice and one that allows me to build on my strength and my positivity. Second guessing myself doesn't get me to where I want to go. It won't shape my life for the better. I like to use moments of uncertainty as a time to train myself to reshape my narrative and become better. Affirmations for a clear mind. Read these out loud in a seated position. My mind is open, my mind is free. Mindful of what I let go and release from my conscious thoughts. My mind is opened. My mind is freed. I will not allow distractions to take me away from my peace. I am clear-headed and driven to be my best self. What it means to me. Clarity is one of the key factors that can make the difference between failure and success. 
The more knowledge and wisdom I seek, the more mental clarity I gain. Reader Reflection Asking yourself the right questions can stimulate thought, reflectivity, and further understanding. Write down three questions that you can ask yourself for clarity. Everything comes full circle. Remember, be unbothered and choose the power of joy. Wow. So that was an incredible way to end the book. And that was the last chapter, chapter 11 of Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. There were definitely a a few memorable quotes from this chapter that I had to make sure that I highlighted. Let me just gather them real quick. Why am I talking with accent? So the whole book is called Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy, right? On page 196, this sentence tripped me up a little bit because I'm like, ooh, that's the name of the book. I am a believer in my power to choose and my commitment to joy. I am a believer in my power to choose and my commitment to joy. The next one is on page 204. You are whole even when folks would rather see you in pieces. Page 207. The hurt of past relationships does not get to speak for the love we deserve. And I think there's another one. Nope, there's not another one. Well, yeah, so this one just wrapped up the book so perfectly, especially especially which one is my favorite one I think my favorite quote it is not my job oh how did I miss this one page 201 it is not my job to get people to understand why I am the way I am honestly reading this last chapter I feel like if I were to write a book it would be something like this because a lot of the concepts and things that Omarion is talking about in this book. I've already had that kind of realization, maybe, mm, probably for real, for real in the last year, but just in general, it's my duty to always be better for myself and learn how to be better and what it means to be better. And I would also credit that to certain podcasts that I listen to, like, this whole chapter right here like let me try to say this eloquently (laughs) he talked about the choice of acknowledging the positivity even through the face of adversity right and i think i'm really proud of myself because i think i've done a good job of even when i'm in a bad space i allow myself to feel that but i don't allow myself to stay in that and I guess I would also have to credit my upbringing being military, like, okay, this mission failed. Let's replan and figure out how the next one is going to be successful. And I'm just really happy and grateful for the ways that I was taught. There's a question in here for a reader reflection. It's like, you know, who taught you what you know? And you realize that you don't have to hold on to those things or you can amplify the things that really benefit you in your life or make you a better person. And I'm just grateful for the way I grew up and the the way that I learned the people who taught me because it's allowed me to see that I don't have to stay where I am, whether that's physically or mentally, definitely physically, because with the military, always moving around, but especially mentally, like, you know, and feelings and situations are temporary. But if you allow yourself to stay in those spaces, then you will be stuck. And so... I'm thankful for the kind of content that I give myself, especially books like this, but also I gotta give credit to, um, they don't do it anymore, but it's called The Love Hour, which is a podcast with Kev on stage and Mrs. Kev on stage. Amazing series, I guess I will call it now, cause it's ended, but they do still have episodes up on YouTube and Spotify, and I think Apple Podcasts as well. But just a lot of episodes that they would play, it would be a lot of, self-reflection and 
I don't necessarily have the money I want to be able to go to consistent therapy right now. So I use these podcasts when they bring on therapists to try to help analyze my own life and what I'm going through and how I'm feeling. And it's actually helped me a lot. And I'm also the kind of person who thinks heavily. Um, I've gotten better with not overanalyzing and not letting myself get to a sunken place in the rabbit hole. But I'm just thankful that I'm able to pick out and be a a good self-critic and figure out how to become better and not stay in a bad place. And this whole chapter really just ties up the book so perfectly, especially with that. It's not my job to get people to understand why I am the way I am. I think a lot of people would benefit from knowing that it's not your job how it's not your job to anticipate how people will react it's just your job to make sure that you are living in your truth and make sure that you are living in a way that feels good for you but is also challenging you and is allowing you to grow it's not your job to get anybody to understand who you are what you're doing why you're doing it you just really need to be here doing the things that's for you and there was another line in here where he said something about making sure that you're not doing things because somebody told you you couldn't do it and really focusing on doing things because it's something that you want to do which is something that i obviously heavily relate to as well i would never encourage people to like something that's real big in music industry right it's this mindset that you're not successful until you have a bunch of haters but why are you feeding hateful energy why is hateful energy what fuels you to be successful why would i want to pay attention to that negativity so i think and i don't have any examples off the top of my head right now but that's one example of the way that language and phrases and like culture can kind of hinder us and handicap us into thinking in certain ways I never understood why somebody would want to do things for a hater when you got so many people out here that love you or when you should be loving yourself. Why are you doing what somebody else is upset? You know what I mean? Like, why are you acting in a way that would upset somebody else? And it doesn't truly make you happy to do those things because you're not doing things for yourself. You're doing something either for the enjoyment of someone else or for that that hating from someone else. And I just never understood it. But I think it's really important that we all pay attention to what we're doing while we're doing it and making sure that we're checking in with ourselves to see that we're doing things because it's something that we want to do. It's something that, like I said, is challenging us and making us want to grow and be better people. And um, I think if everyone could just on an individual level get to that place and that kind of mindset that the world in general would just be a better place. But um. Yeah, I don't want to make this I don't want to make this reflection too long winded. I just I'm just happy to finally be done with this book. And um, I definitely I kind of wish he would do like a separate workbook for this and just have one book completely dedicated. I'm gonna probably send him a message too. I don't know if he'll read it, but you got to try. Send him a message and say like, hey, create an unbothered, an unbothered workbook with all of the journal prompts and all of the questions that are asking people to look deeper and think deeper about themselves, about what's around them, who's around them, why they're doing certain things, what's going to bring them peace and joy and calm, what's not bringing peace and joy and calm. And, you know, all the affirmations, he should put that in a separate book. But um, after a while, I stopped doing the journal entries just because it was taking up so much time. And really why these readings were so spaced out is because I was trying to make sure that I did the work as I went along. Unfortunately, speaking of doing things for other people, I wanted to make sure that I was putting these out in a timely fashion rather than making sure that I myself was going along with the book and doing the work that it was asking me to do and answering the questions that it was asking me. But now I'll probably in the future when I read another book, this is just me talking out loud. In the future, when I read another book, I will just record everything and I won't release, I will only release episodes weekly after I've recorded everything and read the book and did the work for myself because this, I really should have been done with this before the new year, but 
everything comes in perfect timing. And yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I'm going to be doing a full review of the book probably in the next week, within the next week or so. So definitely be on the lookout of that. But anybody who has stuck through this read along journey with me, thank you so much for reading along. And yeah, like I said, if you didn't feel like buying the book or you didn't feel like reading the book or you didn't feel like reading it alone, then that's really what the purpose of me recording it audiobook style was supposed to do. So I hope that that is appreciated. And I hope this serves as an audition for anybody who wants to use my voice to narrate their book. But thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Again, this was Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy by Omarion. And um, if you enjoyed this, then make sure you like Make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow, make sure you leave reviews, give me five out of five stars, whatever platform you are listening on, please interact with me, leave comments and let me know what was your favorite chapter or what you've learned, what's opened up in your mind by going through this book and hearing some of the things that Omarion was talking about. And then let me know what book I should read next, preferably by somebody in music, or just a, a highly influential person. I might actually go back and read Michelle Obama's book, but I'm not gonna do an audio book for that one because it is very big. But um, yeah, let me know what book I should do next. Thank you again for joining me on this read along. My name is Lexi, until next time, peace. <laughs>